So I'm going to click the record button now. And want to welcome everyone uh, to this session, Tools and Techniques to Promote Three Modes of Communication in Blended and Online Courses. My name is Bobby Hobgood. I am first and foremost an educator. And I have been teaching for now, or in education rather, for about 32 years. I know it's hard to believe uh, looking this good, although don't look too closely. Uh, given uh, the quarantine, my hair is a bit long, not having had a haircut uh, in a while. I'm sure a lot of you can empathize uh, about that. Uh, I am currently the director of the Language Resource Center uh, in the Department of Languages and Culture Studies. And I'm so happy to see so many of my colleagues, uh, not only from the department, uh, but also from the university. I'm also very happy to welcome this morning uh, educators in the College of Education, uh, folks from the Center for Teaching and Learning, and also educators in schools surrounding uh, the university. Uh, in particular, some of my former students and current students, very excited to see you here today. Um, I want to also let you know that the resources I'm going to share with you today, the URLs and a brief description, I put all of those together for you in a shareable Google document. And at the end of this session, I'll give you the URL for that document. So uh, you don't have to take copious notes today. If your learning style dictates that you do, that's fine. But otherwise, at the end of the session today, uh, I'll give you the link uh, with all of the resources that uh, I'm using in today's presentation. So my objectives today, uh, first uh, is to define the three modes of communication, although I know most of you are already well aware, you, you know what these are, uh, but just want to give you an opportunity to explore that and, and remind you of what they are. And whether you teach languages or not, uh, the three modes of communication, I think, are very important to bear in mind as we think about engagement strategies in any kind of course, whether it's face-to-face, -face, uh, online, or blended. Um, secondly, we're going to explore some tools and techniques for integrating all three of these. Um, I want you to identify some of these tools and techniques that you can start using right away. And then finally, one of my personal, albeit selfish goals, uh, is to have you say, that's cool, at least one time during the workshop today. Whether you say it to yourself or you type it in the chat window, that's perfectly fine. Now, in terms of question and answer today, uh, there are currently, uh, including myself, 52 people. Uh, in our workshop, so uh, I would ask if you have a question to please raise your hand and you can do so at the bottom of the participants block by clicking on the hand icon. I'll also ask one more time if you haven't muted your microphone to do so. I'm getting some feedback right now, so if you would please uh, find that mute microphone button uh, by your name. Otherwise, I'm going to mute everybody, but I'd rather you mute yourself so that you could unmute and then ask questions later on. Okay, feel free to type questions and ideas and thoughts in the chat window. Uh, if you want to tell me how good I look, that's fine. You can put that in as well. Uh, if you think, uh, Bobby, you're a bit egotistical, you can tell me that as well, too. Um, I'm not phased by such things. My, my mother told me that's the most important thing. So let's get going this morning. Um, I have to tell you, j'ai un gros problème. J'ai un gros problème. I have a huge problem. And my problem is, I'm going to be teaching a language course, and I'm going to be teaching it next Monday, starting next week. And that's not a problem for me. I mean, I, I can rise to meet any challenge, um, but uh, I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be doing this virtually. So I'm going to engage in teletravail. So I'm going to be working remotely teaching this course. Of course, that's what we do, right? When we teach online or when we teach remotely. Uh, or as most of us have been doing for the past couple of weeks, uh, emergency remote teaching. Uh, and so I've been thinking a lot about teaching a language course online. And although uh, I've done some of that before and I've actually produced language courses for our state's virtual public school, uh, I think things are a little bit different uh, these days, uh, especially with the range of technologies available to us. And so I thought my challenge is before this course begins, to really buckle down and to look at all of the options available to me for engaging students in the three modes of communication. 
It also occurred to me that by doing so and by making sure those are a part of the course, students are going to be more engaged in the course. It's much more likely when I use that as kind of a guiding framework in the planning process, more likely that students are going to be engaged. So I want to introduce you to another tool uh, that we can use to uh, engage students, but also address uh, one or more of the three modes of communication. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, about five minutes um, to complete this activity. And so you'll have to leave this screen and then come back to this room. Um, but I want you to look along with me. Here's what you're going to do, okay? Um, you're going to record a 30 second audio note uh, to introduce yourself and to do so in the target language, the language you teach. If you don't teach a language, then English is fine. Um, but in your 30 second audio note, I want you to, um, of course, state your name and then three things about yourself and then make sure you title your note with your name. Now, you're probably saying, okay, that's great, but how are we gonna do this? Well, um, you're actually gonna use a free, easy to use, reliable, researched, um, cool tool called Padlet to do that activity, okay? And so the URL you're gonna, URL you're gonna go to is right here. It is bit.ly slash 13 may me. Okay, bit.ly slash 13 may me. You'll see directions at the top of the screen to remind you what to do. Um, and I'm going to give you five minutes to do this. Okay, um, if you've got any questions, put those in the chat. And for your benefit, I'm actually going to type in the chat window uh, this URL. So for those of you who might have difficulty seeing this, um, I'm going to put that in the window. Um, and oh, many thanks to Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie's already put that in the window for you. So um, if you want to open up the chat window, I'm going to uh, give you about five minutes and then I'll bring everybody back. So don't close out the Zoom room, but uh, maybe minimize this, pull it to the side and open up another tab and um, tell us something about yourself. Okay. Bobby, could you just do that again? I do not see where I'm supposed sure. to record. Absolutely. Happy to do that. All right. Uh, so, okay, if you're looking here, and this is currently the way the interface looks, and you look at the top left corner, here's a note that I created. Okay, you see that note? Yes. All right, at the bottom of the note, you see here's an upload icon, there's a link, there's a Google icon, there's a snap camera icon. And then to the right of that camera, you see three little dots, okay? If you click on the three dots, it expands to reveal a number of options, a number of tools that you can use. You and one on. of those tools is the voice tool. How do you create the note? All I'm seeing is other people's stuff. Okay, to create the note, the note is in the bottom right-hand corner of the Padlet. Okay, so you have to go down to the bottom right hand corner and then click the pink circle with the plus there, sign. There is nothing there. Okay, um, it should be, if you're not seeing it, make sure you've scrolled all the way down to the bottom. Yes. You might have a scroll bar. Okay, make sure that you see that. Okay. Excuse me, where can I, how can oh, I, I get you now. page, introduce yourself? I see it now. I have to scroll all the way down. You're right. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're almost out of time. We're actually, we're out of time for that. Edith, I'm so sorry. We're going to go on. If you didn't get a chance mm -hmm. to do this, you'll be able to do it again. But this information is explained for you. Um, so folks, um, I want you to uh, take a look at what we've got here. And I want you to think about this in terms of the modes of communication. Okay. So um, you see here, um, some folks weren't able to record uh, just yet. Um, some folks were. Uh, I see my colleague Kristen has recorded. Uh, Bobby has recorded. That's probably me. Oh, and then look at all these recordings. Now I see them. Wow, wow. And then there's my beautiful colleague Susanna. She also did, Susanna did a video of herself. So what happens if we click on Susanna?
Hola, buenos días. Mi nombre es profesora Cisneros. Vamos a tener un curso de español muy emocionante este semestre. Vamos a divertirnos y vamos a aprender muchísimo. Ok, muchísimas gracias, Susana. So, um, you see there are a lot of possibilities here. I just asked you to do an audio recording, but you saw there that you can also do a video recording. And we want to thank uh, Susana Cisneros uh, for doing her video recording. Okay, so uh, please don't freak out if you weren't able to do this activity. Uh, realize that uh, we're doing a hands-on technology workshop from a distance, and I'm one person here uh, moderating for 56 participants. So I appreciate your patience uh, this morning and understanding. Okay, uh, I want to pause here and see if there are any questions uh, at all. If you want to raise your hand to ask a question, please or either type your question in the chat window if you prefer to do so. Okay, if there are no questions then, uh, bravo. For those of you who took a risk, if you've never done this before, uh, bravo to you. Um, I want to uh, now uh, take you on to another tool, uh, but before I do, uh, I want to ask you, without us yet having really talked about the modes of communication, what modes of communication are being practiced by that activity we just did or could be practiced? What modes of communication are being practiced or could be practiced? Why don't you put an answer in the chat window? So those of you who are familiar with the three modes of communication, um, we're talking about, uh, okay, in terms of skills, certainly listening and speaking, reading and writing. Um, but when we think about modes of communication, interpersonal, interpretive, and presentational, what modes are we calling upon there? Okay, so I see a lot of answers there. I see folks saying the presentational mode. Uh, I see interpersonal. Uh, I see some people saying presentational and interpersonal. I also see interpretive. In fact, if you think about it, depending upon how you, the instructor, create this activity, you could address uh, more than one at a time here because you're asking students to share something, to present themselves. And then the activity doesn't have to stop there because beyond that point, then you can ask other students in the class to go and listen, or in the case of video, to go and watch the presentations of their classmates and then to take notes on what they have heard or what they have seen and maybe also to ask questions. So then it's possible to create some interpersonal communication from that. So again, that tool is called Padlet, P-A-D-L-E-T, and that is included on the handout you get at the end. So bravo uh, for taking a risk this morning and uh, completing this activity. Okay, um, all of these technology tools, by the way, I'm sharing with you are completely web-based. Uh, so does it matter uh, what browser you're using? Okay, uh, as long as you can get on the internet, these are all web-based and they fit within our budget. In other words, they are free. They are free. So I'm not going to promote anything uh, to you this morning that you have to pay for. Some of them, if you pay a little bit more, you get more options, but uh, I've been able to use the free versions with no problem. Okay, now, so um, I've already talked a little bit and uh, been able to see through the chat window who knows something about the three modes of the communication. When I say three modes of communication, what I'm talking about. Uh, but now I'm going to give you an opportunity to learn some more on your own. Okay. And so um, Stephanie has very kindly put into the window for us uh, the URL for this next activity um, using a really cool tool called GIMKit. And so that URL is simply GIMKit.com slash play. GIMKit.com slash play. So I'm going to ask you to navigate over to a browser or, and this is the cool thing, you can do this on your smartphone. So if you have a smartphone, simply type in GIMKit.com slash play in your browser tool, whatever that may be. And I'm going to leave this presentation and I'm going to go to GIMKit right now. 
and I'm going to log in. So uh, if you're watching my screen, uh, if you want to watch my screen, you can see what I have to do. And it is asking for a code. So give me just a second here. If you watch my screen, I'm going to show you what I'm going through. So I'm logging in. And uh, as the instructor, uh, you do have to create a free account, but I'm in there. And I'm going to search for the three modes of communication. Um, this is a kit or a series of questions that somebody else had already created. wasn't me. Uh, but one of the wonderful things about the web is that we can crowdsource and share uh, resources created by other folks. So um, we're going to do uh, this particular activity, and uh, I'm going to click on play. And so now you should be seeing um, at the top of my screen in the share window the code that you need. That code is 95637. 956 three seven okay so if you look at my screen you'll notice now we're starting to see here people's names appearing on my board as the instructor and so if I were in a face-to-face -face classroom I might show this but because we're doing this remotely I am showing you through zoom uh, my interface and uh, I think it's really important because you'll see why in just a moment. And we see we've got 34 players coming in, and I see the names here. Um, somebody even uh, used the code as their name, which is fine. <laughs> uh, so person 95637. And I'm going to give uh, just a, a little more time here for people to get logged in. Okay, and we're going to start in just a moment. I'm looking at all the names here, and I think we're ready to start this thing. So I'm going to click on Start Game, and if you weren't able to get in, that's fine. If you just want to watch what happens on the teacher's end. So we'll let this run for just a little bit of time to give folks the opportunity to experience, from the student's perspective, this cool tool. This is Jules. This is a game, and so it's going to tell you the type of communication in the blue box at the top, and then it's going to give you four definitions below mm -hmm. in the colored boxes. And so what you do is you read the colored boxes, and you pick the one that matches the title at the top. If you win, you're going to get a dollar, and if you lose, you're going to lose a dollar. And then um, I think the leaderboard that we're seeing Bobby share shows who's winning and who's losing. So try clicking on and see if after after you click, it goes to the next definition. Thank you, Jules. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so from my end, as the instructor, I just stopped the game, so you can stop it at any point. And uh, for those of you who were able to participate, uh, you saw that this was a self-paced activity. So you were able to answer these questions on your own time. And without going into a lot of detail here, um, you could uh, choose options as a participant to earn money if you wanted to or just play the game. Uh, but you also, uh, as you see here on my screen, there are dollar amounts associated uh, with the participation. And so we have to say felicitations or congratulations to our third place finisher, Cheryl, uh, second place, Kristen. And I wonder if that's my good friend and colleague, Kristen Davin. Uh, and then in first place, Danielle. And I wonder if that's my former student, Danielle Imhoff. Uh, I think it is. So congratulations. And then Cheryl, I wonder if that's my colleague, Cheryl Meyer, from the English Language Training Institute. So congratulations to all of you. I'll tell you that I have used a GIM kit in my French classes. Students absolutely love it. Um, you can create your own questions or you can um, copy or use uh, from a uh, repository of other questions or GIM kits as they're called. Okay, so 
Um, pretty, pretty cool. And uh, now that you've had a little opportunity to, again, refresh your memory and explore some more the three modes of communication, um, to be very clear, for those of you um, who uh, have maybe heard modes of communication before, and, and maybe you're thinking about listening, speaking, reading, and writing, which are uh, ways that we communicate, but in uh, second language acquisition and in language instruction, we talk about these three modes uh, as follows. One of them is the interpretive mode, and that's where, as the learner, you're recognizing, understanding, analyzing, and inferring information that's presented to you in any sort of format. So audio, video, text, what have you, or a combination thereof. The second in the middle is interpersonal communication, and that's when as a learner, you have the opportunity to express, question, discuss, and support your ideas through uh, or with another person, okay? So that's that interchange that happens. Uh, and typically what comes to mind is the word spontaneity or spontaneous communication when we think about interpersonal communication. And so that's one of the things that, uh, at the beginning I said, j'ai un gros problème, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with it a little bit here, is how do I create that spontaneity? So there's got to be opportunity in an online or uh, synchronous session like this for interpersonal communication. And then finally, presentational uh, is where the learner narrates, explains, articulates, or delivers uh, some information, something that they have learned. Okay. Uh, so, uh, for example, again, uh, interpretive mode uh, might be students listening to, reading an authentic text, uh, answering questions to demonstrate what they've learned, the teachers providing some feedback on their performance, Interpersonal would be perhaps after receiving some feedback, students engage in communication on a particular topic uh, with uh, one another. And then presentational, they share uh, in a variety of formats, whether it's speaking, uh, maybe uh, a radio broadcast, a poster, brochure, a website, et cetera. Okay. I often think about this in terms of uh, the gradual release of responsibility model. My former students uh, know this very well. The idea that as the teacher, we provide a lot of that content input first. Um, and so uh, during the interpretive mode, students are, are taking in uh, a lot of that information, not just from us, but it can be from um, other knowledgeable others. It can be from a website, an authentic resource. And then students do the work together. So that brings in uh, that interpersonal piece we start to see um, and then um, finally, students do it alone, and that's our presentational uh, mode of communication. Okay, um, so um, in the activity uh, that you just did, uh, we identified that there's a possibility uh, for interpretive, interpersonal, and presentational modes of communication, depending upon how you structure uh, the use of the Padlet tool. Here's an example from uh, my French class. This is French one, and the prompt you see there at the top of the page was, uh, qu'est-ce que tu lis régulièrement? What do you read regularly? Uh, and so my students typed in their names and they uh, responded here what they read regularly. And so uh, we took it, uh, we didn't stop the activity with, with this, but then uh, I displayed this or they looked at it on their individual uh, monitors we had the opportunity to ask the question, so, uh, qu'est-ce que Cindy lit? Or a question like, um, qui lit le Charlotte Observer? And then so we have a, a great opportunity to take this activity beyond simply answering the question here. Here's another way that Padlet can be used. Um, I supported the College of Education in a uh, poster presentation that happened about a month or so ago. And so faculty uploaded PDFs of their posters on a board that looked like this. And then when you actually clicked on that miniature version of the PDF, it expanded so you could see the full PDF right here. So this is another way to, to think about how you might use a tool like Padlet for students to share uh, information, something that they've created presentationally. Uh, and then it could become an interpretive activity where uh, the students who are looking at their classmates' presentations navigate around that board. Okay, so I've already shared some, some cool tools, but I'm going to share some more. So uh, I hope you're ready.
Um, let's take a look at a few more cool tools. This is one uh, perhaps you know about, or if you don't, get ready to have your mind blown. This is called Flipgrid. It is completely free, and uh, the folks at Flipgrid uh, made it so for us uh, as educators. You create an account, and what's nice for those of us using Canvas, especially at UNC Charlotte, it embeds very nicely into Canvas, so you can um, have a Flipgrid link in your Canvas menu. Students can click on it and go to a grid that you created with topics. An easy way to think about what Flipgrid is, is it's like a discussion board, uh, but instead of discussions, you see there, as depicted here in this image, a series of uh, images of people who contributed to this discussion. Okay. They recorded a short video, and as the teacher, uh, you determine how long that video will be, uh, beginning as little as 30 seconds and going up to a few minutes beyond that. And then students can respond to one another by also recording videos. And their responses are the small little videos that you see uh, on top of these images here. So students can give presentations. Uh, they can provide project overviews and reflections. And as a teacher, you can have office hours 24-7 this way. So you could have a uh, private a Flipgrid setup where students come in and post a video asking a question about something related to the class. So we're going to experience Flipgrid this morning. For those of you uh, who have not before, for those of you who have, um, the URL that you need is at the bottom of this screen. And uh, Stephanie, if you don't mind again, uh, so gracious of you, if you would put that URL in the chat window for us, okay? And you are gonna have to log in with a Google account. Um, you don't have to do this this morning if you don't want to, if you uh, uh, feel this is a bit overwhelming, um, but I would love for everybody to attempt this. Um, and once you get there, um, you'll be prompted on the page for what to do. Um, uh, so um, you're gonna have five minutes. I'll give you five minutes to think, to record your response, and then come back to the workshop and we'll debrief. So the focus of this activity is a show and tell, okay? Uh, so uh, you're going to show at least one object this morning, or if you don't have an object handy, maybe tell about something, okay? Okay, folks, sorry to interrupt you if you're in the process of recording, uh, but we do need to move on. And you will have certainly plenty of opportunity after our workshop today to practice this on your own. But I wanted you to experience firsthand one way that you could use a tool like Flipgrid for blended online and frankly, any format of class. Uh, now I'm going to, let's see, uh, my, my colleague, it's so wonderful to see your faces. Zara, for example, Zara, you look like you're ready for a print or television ad right away with that coffee mug and that beautiful smile this morning. Absolutely love it. And then I see my colleague, Maria Mahaffey, uh, such a clown. Look at that, with that hat on. And all these other beautiful faces um, to uh, kind of let you in on what happens next. So if you haven't gathered, you would click on, for example, someone's video, like my colleague, Chicago. And so my wonderful colleague, Chicago Mori, who teaches Japanese at UNC Charlotte, is presenting something that's very special to her in the target language. Now, having watched her video, you'll notice directly underneath her video, this green circle with dialogue bubbles. And by clicking there, I now have the opportunity to respond to Chicago. So I've got a minute and 30 seconds. I could say, as it counts down for me, arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you so much, Chicago. I loved hearing about something that was important to you, that bar of soap. And so I've recorded that. Thank you so much. Okay, and I can take a selfie to go along with this. And then so um, I've got my name here. If I want a title for my response, I can, or a link. I'm just gonna click on submit video at this point. I get this wonderful congratulatory uh, message. 
And now, when we look at Chicago's video, you'll see here at the bottom my handsome face to know that there's a response to Chicago's video. When we go back to the grid, if I refresh the screen now, you'll see then uh, superimposed on top of uh, Chicago's video, uh, that little icon, uh, my video. So I just responded to Chicago. So thanks so much, everybody, for playing along with that activity this morning. That's called Flipgrid. And uh, I'm curious um, to know, using Flipgrid, um, does this let us engage students in interpretive communication? Yes or no? Type your answer in the chat privately to me, privately, okay? So go to the chat box and send me a message privately. By using Flipgrid, are we engaging students in interpretive communication? Yes or no? I'm seeing the answers come in to me privately. Okay, so to be clear, as students watch others' videos, they are engaged in the interpretive piece. If they then take what they're getting from those videos and do something with it. So maybe as the teacher, you created some video viewing questions or guided questions so that as students watch one another's videos, they can answer those questions, all right? Uh, now, my second question, is this a tool for presentational? Is it presentational? In the chat box, type to me yes or no. Is this a tool we can use for presentational communication? I think overwhelmingly yes, because students are creating a presentation of themselves um, as you saw with Chicago's video, using something, a prop. So it's beyond a talking head. It can be so much more. So it's definitely presentational. So now my question to you is, can we use Flipgrid for interpersonal communication? Send me a private message, yes or no. Can it be used for interpersonal communication? And let me tell you, there's greater diversity in these responses than I saw with the previous two modes of communication. So here's what you need to know about Flipgrid and interpersonal communication. I say it does not allow for interpersonal, and here's why. Even though you saw me respond to Chicago's video, there's no opportunity for Chicago to respond back to me in real time. It's me leaving a message and maybe somebody else, but there's not that spontaneous back and forth negotiation of meaning that we see and that we think of in interpersonal communication. So be very careful about Flipgrid in terms of interpersonal communication. It is interpretive in that I can leave a response to what somebody said or what they, they shared via their video, but there's not that opportunity for that person to respond back to me in a spontaneous form of communication. So it is not interpersonal. Now, um, I do wanna tell you, uh, we're running a little bit long this morning, so if you have to leave at 9.30, that's fine. I'm gonna continue on for another probably 10 to 15 minutes. My apologies for doing so, but uh, I uh, always tend to over plan and uh, I wanna make sure that you get the best out of this. So um, I'm gonna continue on. There will be a recording that I'll share later on of this if you have to leave, but otherwise I'd love for you to stay on, okay? Uh, so um, the next tool, uh, Google Forms, is another way that we can touch upon modes of communication. And you completed a Google form to register for today's workshop. Um, 
as students, students can react to videos, images, or links that you embed in a Google form uh, that links to some external content. And then based on that video, uh, maybe you've got some comprehension questions and students would input their responses and submit. And so as the teacher, you might think of this uh, similar to a quiz. Uh, and also, students can create their own forms. Um, and in so doing, they're creating a product for presentational communication. So maybe they're getting information from the class or maybe they're presenting something via a Google form and getting feedback from their classmates. Um, I wanna share with you um, a couple of examples here of how, as a teacher, you might use Google Forms to um, engage in uh, one or more modes of communication. So give me just a second here. Um, these examples are from uh, Catherine Ousla, uh, who is a fantastic French educator and uh, who does a lot nationally with the AATF uh, and with ACTFL. Uh, fantastic educator, and you see here, uh, she has created a Google form on la nourriture et la santé en video, uh, food and health in videos. And so she gives that URL to her students and they complete it here with their name. Notice in the target language, comment uh, what is your name? Um, and then, qu'est-ce qu'on boit? Quelle boisson voit-on dans la vidéo? What uh, what's one drinking? What are they drinking in this video? And students can answer here. And so uh, she's embedded these videos in Google Forms. So um, you may not have thought about using Google Forms in this way because a lot of the Google Forms perhaps you have experienced or created yourself have been in the form of gathering information or creating a registration like I did for today's event, uh, but perhaps not uh, for uh, instructional purposes. Here's another example uh, from Catherine. Mon emploi du temps automne. Um, where she um, is talking with students about their schedule. And so she provides an example here at the top and again, uh, ask for some information. And then uh, she begins her questions and notice that for each of these questions here in this case, there's a text box for students to answer and she provides some resources. So um, what course do you have first period of the day and notice underneath here she's provided a link that takes her students to a page where they have the vocabulary and information they need to complete that question okay so that's google forms and that's another tool that we can use uh, to engage our students in the modes of communication Um, here's another a very simple one to set up as the teacher. Um, in fact, this one doesn't even require that you create an account. Uh, it's called Answer Garden. And uh, I'm going to ask you to play along with me here. Imagine that we are in the target language. And I'm asking you the question, what's your favorite genre of music? What is your favorite genre of music? So you would go to this URL. And again, Stephanie, if you don't mind so kindly, and she's already done it, look at that. Placing that URL in chat window for uh, participants to access. You're gonna go here and just follow the prompt at the top of that page and type in your information. There we go, Stephanie, okay? Answergarden.ch and then slash 122-4956. And so I'm looking here on the screen, and if you are looking at uh, either my screen or at your screen for Answer Garden, if you refresh the page in your browser, you can now see the results of this poll. Um, uh, there's a question in the chat window if asking if the teacher can see who wrote each, each message. No, that's not a possibility uh, with this particular tool to be able to see uh, who wrote that message. Okay, and I'm using this, uh, I don't think there's a paid version, uh, which might offer uh, more uh, options. Uh, but as it is now, so this is an anonymous thing to see. Uh, we couldn't really use this to formatively assess individual students, but as a whole, 
Okay, and so uh, I might ask uh, now that the class has created this, um, what seems to be the most popular genre of music? Okay, and so we've got a couple here that we might say, so jazz is the most popular. So thinking about asking this question in the target language, uh, quel genre uh, est le, le plus uh, populaire? Okay, uh, and then um, you notice, and by the way, to be clear, the words that appear larger are representative of the number of responses for that particular word. So the fact that we see jazz and both pop here in large font tells us a lot of people responded with jazz and pop. Okay, so that is Answer Garden, another tool for uh, addressing modes of communication. Now, um, if you have a learning management system like Canvas or Blackboard, chances are already, well, not chances are, I know for certain, there are built-in tools for both recording video and audio. But if you need to record something on the fly, onlinevoicerecorder.com is a really slick, easy to use tool uh, that allows students or you as the instructor to just simply click on a button and begin recording your message. Bonjour, je m'appelle Robert, je suis de Charlotte, j'ai 20 quelque chose en. Okay, <laughs> so um, there's my video, I paused it, I have stopped it, you see what it looks like. Now what's cool about this particular tool is that you notice on the left hand side here, um, I can actually clip, so there was some information there, pause uh, when I got started, and then likewise on the right hand side, if I want to uh, get rid of any dead space there, I can clip it there. And then I click the save button and it prompts me to download this as an MP3 file uh, somewhere on my computer. Okay, so that is onlinevoicerecorder.com, another really cool tool that we could use in a variety of ways in our courses. Okay, all right, so now, um, we're going to use another tool that's built into Zoom, and if you're using WebEx or other tools uh, that have whiteboard capabilities, uh, this is an activity where we can get, again, total class participation, TCP. So I'm going to ask you, if you would, from the View Options menu at the top of your screen, where uh, you, if you move your cursor up there at the top, you should see you're looking here like I do, uh, view options here to the right of that little bar that says you're viewing Bobby Hopgood's screen. One of the items in that drop down menu of view options is annotate. And if you click on annotate, you'll get this toolbar that you see here in step tool, step two. <laughs> um, you're going to click on the text tool, which is the second tool in that row of icons, a row of tools. And in just a moment, not yet, but in a moment, I'm going to ask you to type one aha idea that you've had thus far in this workshop. And you're going to do so in a grid that you'll see on the next screen. And you choose your quadrant according to your birth month, your birth month. So first, think about an aha moment, okay? And then you're going to start typing that, okay? So uh, here's the page. And I'm going to ask if you would use that text tool. And based on your birth month, type an aha moment that you've had thus far. And again, again, after you type it, you have to click somewhere else on the screen to render or publish what you just typed. It's easiest if you use the text tool, not the drawing tool, but the text tool. And as you notice here, there's a little overlap because I'm asking you to type 
uh, quite a bit, but that's okay. We're, we're actually able to read this. So somebody recognized interpersonal can't really be done in Flipgrid. Somebody liked GimKit, Answer Garden, Padlet and Google Forms. Somebody said they didn't know there were so many possibilities uh, using Padlet for in-class pre presentation. Somebody really likes the use of Flipgrid for office hours. Yeah, I think that's cool too. I may try that out. Um, embedding videos in Google Forms, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so you see here another technique. Uh, this was a slide in my, um, my slide deck for today. And I created this grid and I put the months in the four corners in order to organize what could otherwise be somewhat chaotic of an activity. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna ask you to stop typing. I'm gonna clear everything now. Okay, uh, maybe after I take a screenshot, I think this would be uh, cool to screenshot and hold on to. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to clear all of the drawings and we're going to move on here. Um, another, and, and we're almost finished folks. So again, if you have to leave, uh, that's totally fine. Another tool that I use uh, very often, in fact, I use this in a grad course is Google Voice. And you can create a free uh, Google Voice account. Uh, it's a phone number, uh, as a matter of fact, so that students don't call your own personal phone, but they call this other number and they can leave a voicemail. You can record the outgoing message in the target language. So they call the number, they hear your outgoing recording, and then they leave a voicemail message. Now you, you have to give students some preparation for this. You have to tell them, please clearly state your name at the beginning and then leave your message. Okay. But that's Google voice. And uh, just a word of caution here. I discovered that with our university Google accounts, we, can't access Google Voice, I don't believe. However, if you have a personal Google account, uh, it will allow you to create a free Google Voice account. So uh, think of it as students calling and leaving a voicemail. That's Google Voice. Okay. In terms of that interpersonal communication, we've been doing some of that today using Zoom, uh, but there are other really cool tools out there for partner conversations where students can record their interactions. Um, Google Meet, uh, if your students have access to uh, Google using Gmail, they can set up a conversation there that can be recorded and shared with you. Um, I am using um, this summer and during the year a textbook program by Vista Higher Learning called Portai. Uh, the Spanish counterpart is Portales and some of my colleagues here today are using that. And there's a tool in there called Partner Chats. You see here depicted in the top right quadrant where students have a prompt and they have assigned partners and they go in at the same time and they can connect with one another. And you see here um, the uh, young lady, her video is smaller and her partner is the larger video. And they have a prompt where they have to uh, record themselves engaged in conversation based on this prompt. And then they save it and it's directly in the platform for the teacher to use. So in terms of that interpersonal communication, there are a number of options. Uh, some suggestions I would offer to you, however, is to prepare folks in advance. And I didn't really do that for today, um, but here's an example of some information. Uh, this is provided uh, by Carly Mora and then Matt Miller did the illustrations. Uh, from the noun project where they in advance of their interpersonal meetings they give them some tips on how to make sure this is a successful video call um, i'm also uh, giving you access to to this slide with 20 ideas for video meetings with students so uh, as we're doing today whole class instruction small group or class presentations uh, in my French class this summer, I'll do a combination of one and two 
where uh, a couple times a week we'll meet as a whole class, but then a couple times a week they'll meet in small groups. And then they'll also meet uh, with their partners as well. Uh, in terms of the office hours, um, you know, students are so reluctant to come to office hours, but if you give them some information about office hours, um, then perhaps they might take more advantage of it. So I love this from uh, a colleague of mine, Leslie Grand, who uh, is retired right now and who has fabulous ideas for how to engage students uh, in any language. Um, she provided this list of what students can do during office hours. And so as we think about using uh, video for interpersonal interactions like this, um, give students some ideas for what they could actually do with those virtual office hours. Um, there is another uh, great tool when we think about presentational and interpretive communication called Screencastify that is uh, in addition to what you might already have access to for those of you at UNC Charlotte using Canvas, we have the built-in Kaltura, which lets us create a screen recording. But Screencastify um, is a browser add-on for Chrome, very simple to install. And if you're looking at my screen, you can see it here to the right of the screen. And it lets you create a five-minute screencast, five minutes or less. So if I click on this here, um, it's gonna ask me, um, I wanna record the browser tab or my desktop, maybe just webcam only. Um, uh, you choose the settings that you want and then you click on the record button and you start recording, it counts down for you. You see there the numbers and now I'm recording and so I could share anything on my desktop and record things. And when I'm finished, I go back to that button in the browser and I'm going to stop. And then it has downloaded for me uh, this particular video. There's the video. And I have to click here to unmute. There's the audio. And then you can download that video. In this case, I've linked it to my Google Drive. So that is Screencastify, a really cool tool for students to create a presentation uh, using uh, a screencast. And then the final, final tool I wanna share with you today is something that is gonna blow your mind. Um, this is one of those tools we call a time sync. Uh, it's the web-based tool called sketchpad.app, and it is in essence a sketchpad. Uh, students can use this on their own and save their work and send it to you, or as the instructor of the class, you can use Sketchpad uh, for a lesson. So uh, here's an example uh, of how I might use Sketchpad. So I have already imported here into the tool uh, a background image. And I, from the left-hand side, uh, can bring in uh, some other uh, clip art, some objects. So uh, here you see a little penguin that I brought in uh, from the tool palette here and I can drag him around and so as we are practicing the pièce de la maison, the rooms in the house, I can move the penguin to different places and I can ask où est-il? Il est dans la cuisine ou il est dans la chambre? I could make them smaller so that you could better see the room. And so students can answer privately in the chat window, il est dans la chambre. I can then move him again and say, où est-il? Ooh, il est dans le grenier. He's in the attic. Um, I can also start typing. So before we even uh, start addressing or talking about uh, the rooms of the house, I want to introduce our main character here, the penguin, and I might ask students, um, est-ce que c'est un chat, c'est un penguin ou c'est une girafe? C'est un chat, c'est un penguin, c'est une girafe. Ah, ah oui. And then asking students to either use their microphones and we can type, oui, c'est un penguin. Okay, so for those of you who do picture talks, or any kind of 
uh, talk activity. Uh, Sketchpad.app is a really cool tool to practice in real time. And then when we're finished, among the tools here at the bottom, I can export what I created here as a JPEG. I can download it as a PNG, a PDF. Um, I can choose an, the entire thing, or maybe just uh, if I click on download region, check this out. It will let me just select maybe a part of the image to download. Okay, so that allows us to practice interpretive, maybe presentational um, modes of communication. All right. So um, I hope today, again, going a little bit longer, and I appreciate your patience. I hope that we defined the three modes of communication that you were able to explore some tools and techniques for integrating all of these, uh, at least maybe one or hopefully more than one tool or technique that you can use right now. And I hope that at some point you either thought in your head or you typed or you said aloud to yourself, if you talk to yourself like I do, that's cool. Okay. So I want to leave you with uh, these thoughts. Uh, first of all, tu peux le faire. You can do it. Realize that um, it takes some practice. I would practice this first of all um, before you try it out with students. Um, and then I'm going to say un grand merci. Thank you to everybody for participating today, for attending. Uh, it was my pleasure to put this together for you in support of those of you who are teaching summer school, those of you who will teach in the fall. And as I always end my videos uh, and feedback to my graduate students, my admonition to you all is to be observant, to be well, and to be good to one another. Best wishes to you all. And here at the bottom is the URL for the handout I promised you at the very beginning of our session today. It is bit.ly slash tt three modes. TT standing for tools and techniques for the three modes. bit.ly slash tt three modes. Uh, again, uh, it has been my pleasure to support you today. I thank you all for being here so early. Thank you for hanging on as we went beyond the hour. And I uh, hope you'll drop me a line. You see my email address there. I'd love to know from you your thoughts about today's workshop and any questions that you might have. Many thanks to Stephanie Stewart for the assist, unsolicited, I might say, in the chat window. Stephanie so kindly providing those links that we used this morning throughout the workshop. So I'm going to stop the recording now, and I'm just going to hang online.